insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens, episode 3. 139 Maintaining Healthy Relationships. I'm your host, Madison Whalen, and my co host, Joseph Whalen. Hello, Maddie. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How about you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. So how's your week been? It's been good. Uh, I've got a new hire uh, down in our Maryland facility, much faster than I thought. So things are looking up for us. Nice. How about you? How was your week? Uh, you know, it's been. Fine. Nothing really too big has happened, but, well, despite, you know, Valentine's Day, I got to eat lobster and I went to the dentist. Okay. I'm <laughs> not sure which one of those was the good part or <laughs> if both of those are things you look forward to. <laughs> huh. Good for you. Thanks. Um, but that's not going to be talk- what we're going to be talking about today. So today we're going to be talking about maintaining healthy relationships and We're kind of having a different change of pace. I read up the notes for the show, and apparently I'm hosting. You are owning this one, sweetheart. (laughs) Yay. So, relationships come in all shapes and sizes. But regardless of whether the relationship is platonic, romantic, or familial, it should... It should... Nourish? Nourish. (laughs) I don't know why I forgot that word all of a sudden. You did fine on the (laughs) read-through. It should nourish and support us. Having healthy relationships can make a huge difference in our mental health and well-being. But creating healthy relationships takes time and effort. On this episode of Insights into Teens, we'll take a look at what you can do to create and maintain healthy relationships in your life. But before we start, I'd like to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can hit us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and much more. You can email us at comments and insights into things.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. And there, you can find links to all of these and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Nicely done. Are we ready? I think we are. Alrighty. So, first question we're going to pose is, what is a relationship? Now, if you're a long-time viewer, you might have known that we've already discussed a bit about relationships on this podcast before. But that was mainly to detail toxic relationships and how to deal and move on from them. But we're not going to be talking about that today. So today we're going to look at the other side of the spectrum and how to maintain positive relationships. So the term relationship has a variety of meanings, something we discussed on our relationship podcast. Um, But today we're going to kind of just go by one term, one basic term that we're going to decide to use which I was um, able to get from my uh, health class presentation. And this term is known as a bond or connection you have with other people. While this is a very broad definition for what relationship means, it covers most of what we're hoping to address on today's podcast. And there are different forms a relationship can take, as well as different terms associated with said forms. And in order to keep with the spirit of the podcast, we're going to look and define these different forms. So when we hear the term relationship, most of us think about romantic relationships in which two people are dating. Although this is a very prominent type of relationship, people often mistake it for being the definition of what relationship means when it's really only a subcategory of the term. There are plenty of relationship types that aren't related to romance. Some of these include platonic, familial, 
professional, academic, and even community relationships. While some of these relationships might sound familiar, it's not likely they all come to mind for everyone. It's important that we distinguish and notice the various forms of relationships that there are, and don't just associate the term to mean one or two specific types. In the end, all these relationships matter, and it's also important to notice which aspects of your life different relationships apply to. So before we, we get too deep into this, when you discuss this uh, in your, your health class, did they kind of feel out or, or talk about in detail what kind of relationships you've formed at this point in your life? Because some of these aren't going to apply, I have to imagine, right? Yeah, but they kind of um, more or less gave us the different kinds of relationships that there are, as well as helped us kind of define some of them. Like platonic was a big one that they ended up um, getting us to define. There was an entire definition of it. Um, and they also pointed out some of these other relationships that I didn't even think of. Like, I didn't think of the community relationship until I ended up seeing um, uh, the PowerPoint. So what kind of examples did they give for community relationships? Like, kind of, in a way, your role in society, almost. Like, what you contribute to whatever cause. Like, like what, like, maybe, like voluntary acts like doing com community work and such so for us for instance for mommy and i maybe uh our association with uh the band parents association would be a community relationship yeah about that and your association with the band itself would be more of an academic relationship yeah probably so some of these relationships could potentially cross over as well any other situations in which you think some of these might cross over? Um, I can kind of see familial and platonic, and platonic relationships kind of crossing over. Like either you're really close friends with those, with the people in your family, or you're so close friends with someone that they become your family. Like an extended family type situation. Yeah. I could see something like that with professional and platonic, too, where, you know, you may meet somebody through work, develop a professional relationship with them, and then you might start hanging out with them and, and you know, doing things outside of work, and it becomes a, a friendly platonic relationship with them at that point in time. So I guess the important thing to point out is that the types of relationships that we're talking about here are not mutually exclusive. They kind of denote the, the different activities, perhaps, the different um, feelings, maybe, the different status of what the other individual might mean. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, the important thing here is not all relationships happen to be romantic relationships. Yeah. There are a ton of relationships that happen. Uh, like, for instance, I have... It, it my work, I have an individual who happens to work for me now who was a contractor for the longest time and, and he would come in one day a week and, and do work for us on a contract basis with a company that we were uh, employing and he and I became friends as a result of that and then when he was looking for work and, and wanted to leave where he was at, he wound up coming to work for me. So that kind of encompasses like three different types of relationship there, which is kind of a interesting combination yeah um so what do you say we take a quick break and we come back and we get a little bit more into roles in relationships sure all right we'll be right back for over seven years the second sith empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, 
world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about how to maintain healthy relationships. So now we're going to discuss more in depth about the roles that we take in relationships. So previously, we mentioned the different types of relationships that exist. So now we're going to break them down and define what each relationship means and possible roles that you could play in said relationships. So the first one we have is romantic. So due to the common misconception that this form of relationship is the predominant definition of the term, most people are aware of what a romantic relationship is. It's known as the voluntary relation between two people who feel in some way attracted to each other in a romantic and sometimes sexual way. It, it's basically just the act of loving another in the terms of dating or even marriage. Then we have platonic, which we've talked about a little bit already. So in a platonic relationship, it can be defined as a significant relationship between two people that's based on trust, caring, and consideration. Platonic relationships are often referred to as friendships. Friendship is a very common relationship to have, and it can be between all age groups. Next up, we have familial, which we also kind of talked about. Along with romantic and platonic, this is a very common relationship in most people's lives. This relationship stems from a bond or strong connection with a family unit. A lot of relationships are biological, but some aren't, kind of like how we mentioned that platonic and familial kind of mixed. Exactly, yeah. Then we have our professional relationships. Now, this is one that probably won't apply to some of the younger folks here until you get out into the, the working world. But professional relationships are that of your work environment or just the people you communicate with in your job. This type of relationship could also involve customers, vendors, or other people you interact with professionally. I talk to a lot of vendors in, in my work. Uh, I've become friends with several of my, my vendors. Uh, and it, you know, if you're a friendly person, you can't help but make friends with people. In a professional environment, it usually, if you, you know, manage the relationship properly, in a professional environment, being friendly with your vendors can be very beneficial from a business standpoint as well. You get preferred pricing, you get first dibs on uh, certain products that come out. They're the first ones, you're the first one that they call if they get something new. So kind of being in that, in the, the, the thoughts and the front of their mind at that point in time by, by being friendly with them helps. It's not just about getting a, a free lunch here and there, but it's about relationships and business is very much about relationships probably even more so i think than than personal life because there's there's a dollar value associated with it and the relationships that i have on a professional level aren't just relationships for me they're relationships for my company so my company is counting on me to do a job in order to do that job, I have to manage these relationships in a way that they are profitable. So there's a little bit more pressure on the relationships probably. And because there's a dollar value usually associated with it, they tend to take a lot of precedent in your professional life. What else do we have? And then we have one that's also kind of, um, kind of subjective to a specific group, and that's more for the younger people, which is academic. So this relationship is found in a school environment, hence the name. This relationship can apply to anyone and everyone that is in attendance in a given school environment. So it would basically apply to me and pretty much any student. It, would, it, it could happen, and it basically happens once you start school, basically. So would you consider um, a relationship that you have with a teacher you know, correspondence and, and stuff like that. Would you consider something like that an academic relationship? You being a student, them being the teacher? I mean, yeah, because a lot of times I'm hoping 
to succeed academically and having um a specific academic relationship in order like so that I can I'm able to pass my classes and do well with um my teachers and communicating um various ver um academic goals that I have yeah I would definitely say that I have a that there is that academic relationship between me and my teachers. So based on that definition, would anybody that you interact with at school be considered an academic relationship, like your marching band instructor? I mean, I mean, in a way, he is also kind of a teacher. Um, and, like, that probably would be a bit more of a casual relationship, and it could probably even be a mix of some other relationships, like platonic and such. Um... But, yeah, if it's still kind of in a school environment, there's still kind of that academic um, pres um, relationship. Okay, that makes sense. So the last one that we have is your community relationships. And, and these are pretty self-explanatory. They're known as your relation to, to your community. Whether your community is a town, a city, a religious congregation... You more than likely have some relation to your community. And the first one I think that comes to mind for me, we, we already talked about the Band Parent Association. Um, another one that comes to mind would be something like a volunteer fire company. Uh, I used to be part of the volunteer fire company in my old town. And it's one of those things where the entire community centered around that activity. Whether it was bingo night or the softball games, you know, whatever happened the community kind of rallied around the fire department where a lot of small towns, it's your football teams, your sports teams at your high schools. You know, when we were going to uh, the football games for marching band, that was, that was when people saw each other, they got together at a community event like that. Um, can you think of any, anything else that would be a, a community type of environment or community relationship? You know, we talk about religious congregation as well, um, I'm not a particularly religious person, so that doesn't apply to me anymore. I, I that kind of did when I was a kid, but not so much now. What else would be community? Do you think? Well, like I think of like volunteering at soup kitchens or um, volunteering to just um, help out at some local business. Sure, Sam, uh, uh, our host of our. Insights into Tomorrow podcast, your brother, um, when he was in high school, he volunteered at a food pantry. I don't know if he still does. He might still do it. But that was one of his things. Once a month, he'd go out there and he'd help with the food pantry. Uh, so, yeah, volunteer work like that would would certainly qualify as well. Um, I can't think of anything else that would be community-related. Um, I mean, I guess, like... My one teacher kind of gave an example of, like, maybe you have, there's, like, a neighbor who, you know, like, is kind of elderly and, um. Oh, yeah, and, sure, and I like, can see that. And, like, you help out, like, if there's snow, um, if it snowed, like, you offer to shovel. Yep, and, you know, my mom used to do that. There was a, there was an elderly woman in town and she couldn't take care of her, her house anymore. My mom would go over and help her cook and clean, and in a couple of days a week, she'd cook meals for her and clean her house for her. Um, you know, going around and, I guess, raking leaves even for people or shoveling snow. I mean, that's almost a professional type of relationship where I had one guy who always would have would hire me and my friend to come shovel his snow because he couldn't do it himself. But, you know, we didn't charge the guy what we would charge normally. It was a couple bucks here and there just for the hour or two it sucks. So, yeah, sure, anything that you're supporting the community with something like that. Uh, what else do we have? So, in all relationships, there are different roles you may take on throughout your day. So, role by roles, we mean that basically what part you play in a relationship. So there are different roles for every relationship, and we'll list some, a few examples. So first up, we have some academic roles, which would be something like a teacher, student, classmate, band member, staff, principal, or a counselor. So of those that you listed, how many of those interactions do you think you have on a regular basis? 
Um, I interact with my teachers. Um, I would probably be considered a student, and I interact with my other classmates. Sure. Um, I'm also technically a band member. Um, once marching band starts up, you know, um, band member starts kicking in. Right. Um, sometimes I, I don't really interact with like other staff that aren't really my teachers. What about like lunch aides and stuff like that? I mean, sometimes they kind of, you know, just kind of patrol, um, and such. Um, we were fortunate enough to interact with that one staff member when we lost our phone and we had to get into the building to find it. Yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I've had interactions with the principal before. Well, you keep showing up on his list, you know? You get on that principal's list and you're going to interact with the principal. Um, and I did have a recent, uh, discussion with a counselor. So all these have applied to you at some point in time. Yeah. Any of these particularly significant to your day-to-day -day activities? Um, I guess, you know, like... The interactions with my classmates and my teachers, um, for the most part, I don't see like I'm not a I'm not like a regular band member anymore. It's kind of just like okay, when band season starts, that's kind of when I start becoming the band member again. Right. Um. Sometimes I interact with some of the staff. Sometimes I don't. So there's some there's some effort, but there's certainly some impact to your day to day life on your academic relationships. Yep. Okay. So the next type that we have, type of relationship, is the familiar. And this is pretty much anyone in your family. It could be your parent or guardian. Uh, if you are a parent, it could be your son, your daughter. Uh, it could be a sibling if you have brothers and sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your nieces, your nephews. The one that's important to mention here is, is stepchildren. You know, stepchildren, this is one of those situations where there may not necessarily be a... Uh, blood relationship. It could be stepchildren. It could be adopted children. It could be children that you're fostering. Extended family. It could be extended family. Um, they're all relationships that fall into that familiar relationship. And what are some of the traits that you could think of, of a familiar relationship that distinguish it, distinguishes it from other relationships? Like maybe... Kind of how you interact with them, like maybe you have certain jokes you tell them or just like certain things you do with them that you don't normally do with other people. Um, you probably have a much close, this is probably one of the very much closer bonds. Yeah. Because like I feel that like platonic relationships end up turning into familiar relationships at some point because I do feel that familiar relationships are like the strongest relationships. <laughs> Well, and the funny thing that is absent in these roles is husband and wife because they'd fall more into that romantic relationship even though they're technically family by marriage. Yeah. Um, but I would think that it's probably a relationship that's a bit more forgiving. Yep. You know, they're going to be a little bit more accepting of you. I'd hope they'd be more accepting of you. If they're not. Um, if they're not, you need to pick a different family. Yeah, pick a different family. <laughs> Um, but I, I think it's one of the ones that kind of sticks out because, like we talk about extended family, we, we have a lot of extended family. In fact, most of our family is extended family because pretty much everyone on, on my side of the family has passed away and pretty much everyone on mommy's side has passed away. A um, few siblings here and there. But for the most part, our support network as it is, we rely on on friends who are extended family. In fact, mommy was just talking about, you know, kind of an extended family member with, uh, with Regina. Uh, and she is, you know, when I was stuck in the hospital that one time and we needed someone to sit with you, she stepped up. She was the first person to step up. That's what makes you family. When you're there to support people, no questions asked. When you're there at the drop of a hat, when you're, when you're, you know, you're, you're the support team at that point in time. And, and it, it's, it's a special type of relationship. It's not just that platonic friendship relationship. There's a certain level of trust that goes with that, right? Yeah. Like we wouldn't leave our young child with just about anybody. You know, it has to be someone that we're going to trust. Yeah. So that's kind of an, an important type of relationship. And the roles in there are very defined but very important. Mm-hmm. 
The next one, obviously, is is going to be our professional type of relationship. And we've talked about some of the roles already, but you have colleagues, you know, people that you work with. Uh, you might have a, a boss or a supervisor that you deal with. Uh, you have a CEO or a company owner or some of the higher up management that you, you work with. And if you're a, a supervisor or a boss yourself, you might have employees. Um, the position that I'm in right now, I'm, I'm a director uh, of a department. So I have people below me and I have people above me. So it kind of gives me a unique perspective where I kind of touch most of these, uh, these roles here. Um, but I'm the type of, of person that I, I try to be, uh, my one employee constantly refers to me as firm, but fair, but I like to get along with, with my employees. I like to treat them, you know, not, I can't treat everybody like it's a, they're a friend because you can't manage friends. It's very difficult when, when you have friends and you're trying to manage them. Um, but it's not just a do your job, I'm your boss type thing. I hate being called a boss. I really do. Mm. Uh, I'm more of a coordinator, a traffic director. I'm there to make sure the job gets done and everyone does, everyone interacts as they're, as they're supposed to. Uh, and I generally have that kind of relationship with the upper management in my company too. So I'm very fortunate when it comes to that. What are some of the roles in communities? Um, so in communities, you might be a religious member, a citizen, or a neighbor. And um, yeah, and if we look at you know some of the examples that we had before, you could if we're talking volunteer fire company, could be a member of the fire company, could be an officer there, um, it could be someone who's volunteering at the soup kitchen, and that's the kind of relationship you might only see them you know once a month. You know, you see them, you know, how's the kids, how you doing, you know, you know, you might interact a little bit there and then it's down to business to kind of do whatever the volunteer work is. Uh, so the, the community could be any, any number of different roles within the community itself. Sometimes it's politics, you know, you have, it could be the school board and, uh, you go to the school board meetings and you interact with them that way or, if you're a band parent and you go to the monthly band parent meetings or we show up at the competitions and we we support each other that way. And that was a thing that I have to say was was surprising, but in a good way, was the level of interaction that we found we had with the with the community of the marching band. And it isn't it wasn't just our group, it wasn't just the parents from our band. You saw that kind of support throughout the competitions. Uh, it, it, in one competition, there happened to be a member of our group who was very vocal, cheering her daughter because it was it was her senior year. It was the last competition of the year, and she was down there and making a big deal about it, and everyone loved it. You had people up in the stands who were from other bands. Yeah, they're all clapping for her because of how she's clapping for her daughter. So that level of community there with people that were complete strangers because of what the parents were doing, because of the fact that you were there to support your kids and all the other parents were, didn't matter that it was a competition. You were all there for a common cause and that was to support the kids. And to see that, and, and that happened a couple of times throughout the year, too, where uh, at one competition, I had someone that was sitting next to me while I was in the stands, and they were going crazy. So I was cheering for them and their kid, too, and everybody clapped for every band. You, you didn't just clap for your your own band. So there was a sense of community there that you, you I've never seen before, really. I mean, it's almost... I don't want to call it fanaticism because that almost sounds like a negative term, but there's just a a sense of community, you know, where, yes, my child is in this marching band, but we're here to support all the kids. Um, and it was a it was a very, very uplifting feeling, I think I could say. Uh, we have a couple other categories. What do these fall into? 
These kind of were ones that I really wasn't too sure where would they would technically go. And there are a couple of miscellaneous terms that I kind of just added in. Um, those could include that of a tutor or that of a friend. So a friend, now we've talked about pl uh, platonic relationships being friendships. So they would probably fit into that. And a tutor probably would fit into our, our academic relationship category. We didn't list that in the academic relationships. Yeah. Um, but there could be other things. For instance, I have uh, a gaming group that, that I run for this online game. Technically, I guess that's an online community. Uh, we didn't even talk about that. Mommy has communities that she, she um, participates in. Like book clubs. Or book clubs, exactly. So these are all different types of relationships that we have. And those relationships can certainly extend beyond that. Like mommy became very close friends with several of the women in her, in her book club. So there's that platonic relationship that happens there. Some of the women that were in there, uh, we've actually engaged in business with them because uh, one happened to do home renovation. So we actually wound up using some of her staff to do some work on the house here. So that spawned into a professional relationship type of thing. So, Relationships themselves can be very complicated, uh, but they can be very rewarding as well. So why don't you take it from here? So there are many relationships that make up our lives, and there are even more roles we take up in those relationships. And like you said, relationships can be very complicated, but are often very rewarding. So we're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll talk about the traits of healthy relationships and how to maintain a healthy relationship. All right, we'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about maintaining healthy relationships. And now we're going to discuss more about the traits of a healthy relationship. So in healthy relationships, people respect and support each other. Healthy relationships nurture you, bring out the good in you, and encourage you to make healthy decisions in your life. So there are four main qualities of a healthy relationship, one of which is known as mutual respect. So with mutual respect, you show respect towards other people in your relationship, and in turn, they show you respect. You would also accept each other's opinions, tastes, and traditions, despite the fact that they might be different. Mutual respect also comes with the ability for people in a relationship to agree to disagree, instead of trying to force their opinions onto each other. Caring is another trait that's important to healthy relationships. This means that you treat each other in the relationship with kindness and consideration. When experiencing difficult times in a relationship, you show empathy and support those that it affects. Being caring also shows that you're willing to help out others. Another trait of a healthy relationship is honesty. So there's not really much to this. It's just that you're open with others rather than concealing your thoughts, feelings, or emotions. And the last one that we'll talk about here is commitment. Being committed means you contribute to the relationship and work to keep it strong, even if it means making some sacrifices. This also means that you deal with problems in a positive way and are able to overcome them. So, now that we've talked about the traits, now we're going to talk about 
um, a specific skill you can make you can use to maintain healthy relationships. While we've mentioned the traits of healthy relationships, we're now going to discuss a particular skill you can use in order to strengthen and maintain strong relationships. So this particular skill um, is known as the three C's, and the three C's are communication, cooperation, and compromise. So the first one we have is communication. Communication is a major factor in all relationships. People in relationships need to understand each other. It's important to learn effective communication skills so you can express your thoughts, feelings, and expectations to others in your relationships, as well as to better understand theirs in return. You also have cooperation. In relationships, people need to cooperate with each other. Cooperation means to work together for the good of all. Cooperation can help strengthen relationships as long as everyone does their part. And finally, we have compromise. There are going to be points in your relationship where either side wants different things. The best way to combat the possibility of conflict is to compromise. Compromise is a problem-solving method in which each participant gives up something to reach a solution that satisfies everyone. That's not to say that everyone's fully satisfied in every compromise. Yeah. There's an important distinction. Yep. So, if you're able to utilize the three C's method, you'll be able to maintain healthy relationships with the people around you. So, with all that said and done, let me ask you, do you think the relationships that you have now are healthy relationships? I do feel so. I don't feel there's any real signs of them being inherently negative, and I do feel that most of them may have some of have some of the four traits we mentioned before. Have you ever been in an unhealthy relationship? Um I mean there are definitely relationships that I ended up having to cut off either because we didn't communicate well enough or there was just or we just wanted different things and I will pr- I actually do have a pretty big example, and I guess that's probably my relationship with um, one of my friends when I was in sixth grade. Um, And I think a lot of that was one me, I was going through a lot, uh, a lot um, at that time. It was a lot emotionally, and I really didn't know how to handle it. But I'd probably say overall, the relationship mainly due to me, was kind of unhealthy. Like, I still really cared for my one friend, but at times I would randomly lash out at them, and uh, that was probably poor communication on my side anyway, because I didn't really communicate all that well. I I let my emotions kind of take the best of me, and most of the time I would normally have to be the one to apologize, and thus, and... At that point, I was able to, like, calm down and figure out the best way to communicate. Okay. Well, at least you were able to find a way out of that type of situation. Yeah. Uh, So I think that's all we had today. Uh, We'll take a quick break. We'll come back, and we'll get your closing thoughts and your shout-outs. All righty. Alrighty, so to everyone out there, I just wanted to um, say that it doesn't matter what kind of a relationship you're you're in, um, whether it be platonic, romantic, familial, community-based, stuff like that. Um, It's important that you maintain a healthy relationship of any kind. And if you do feel that you are in a not- healthy unhealthy relationship i'd probably meant i'd probably recommend checking out our our other video on relationships in order to get a better view of that but if you are having but if you do have a good relationship and just want to strengthen it or be able to maintain it i hope that what we offered here um will hopefully serve uh well in the end
Okay. It's also important to note that relationships are are tough. They're not easy things. If 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 you want them to be worthwhile, they require a lot of work. Yeah. And it requires work by everyone who's involved in, in the relationship. Uh, you have to be willing to compromise. You have to be willing to give. Uh, you have to be willing to communicate. And I think if if the relationship is important enough to you, then the sacrifices that you make for that relationship are more than worth the rewards that you get. But it's also important that you also state what you want from the relationship. and Absolutely. Make sure to not have it go for one side or the other. Absolutely. Relationships are a balance. Yep. So... Good, uh, good thought to leave us on. Before we do go, I want to once again invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of this podcast can be found listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, any place you can get a podcast these days you can find us. Uh, also, just a side note, we are now releasing our audio podcasts on the uh, Insights into Things feed as well, just for convenience sake. Uh, you can also reach out to us, give us your feedback, give us your show suggestions. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can find high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate you throwing that our way. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Insights Into Things, or you can find links to all these and more on our official website at InsightsIntoThings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights Into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights Into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Yes, and we just published a new episode of Insights Into Tomorrow after a very long hiatus. Yay! So, but that is it for our podcast today. Thank you for listening and watching. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.